So let's talk about your sales process then during for the next sort of five, ten minutes or so. What about your sales process as a mortgage advisor, financial advisor? Um, call it a sales process if you want to, or an advice process if you don't like the word sales. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm big enough and ugly enough not to worry about that sort of thing. But the whole point behind having a advice process or a sales process is it helps you to generate business, to upscale your business, to maybe bring new advisors in, uh, to, to give advice that's the same for all customers, to keep that level of uh, customer satisfaction high. So it's good to have some structure in the way that you operate your clients. And as a result of many, many mortgage advisors going virtual, in other words, they're using video to talk to clients, more and more are doing that now. More are doing it than not now, which is quite interesting. A lot of the new people coming to the marketplace are adopting the virtual marketplace as well. So, got a few ideas to share with you on this one then. I'm going to put a couple of slides up as well. So what I'll do is I'll bring the slides in with, um, with me. Sure, there we are. Da -da -da -da. You've got me. Well, where are the slides? That way, aren't they? There they are. There's the slides. You can see them there quite clearly. So I'm talking about the 15-minute mortgage discovery call. Now, the, the question really to ask yourself, and by the way, there's the book that covers all of this. There's a little bit of a plug there for you with the new book. But come on down later. Here's some questions to ask yourself. First of all, do you give free advice? So as a mortgage advisor, do you ever find yourself giving free advice to clients? Particularly if you've just um, contacted them and they're chatting and asking questions and you're giving general advice, if you like. Not on the mortgage side, but general advice and information. Is it, are you giving free stuff out to people? And you're a little bit concerned about that because you know, you've got bills to pay like everybody else as well. Um, when do you stop prospecting and start advising? Now, if you're having to prospect or lead generate for new business, and who doesn't, let's face it, where, when do you stop prospecting and advising? Where's the cutoff? Because you can carry on prospecting and convincing clients to use you, and they'll start getting free advice. And that's not a good thing, is it, if you think about it? Um, when do you start the time clock? Now, lawyers and accountants, they have a time clock, don't they? They start, start the time clock, start charging. When do you start it? Or is it embarrassing to start? Or is it you know, the first fact find meeting that you do, you start it? It's all just a difficult conversation, isn't it, if you think about it? And what's your call to action when prospecting? So when you're, you're talking to somebody, maybe a bought lead, and you're on the phone to persuade them to come along and, sort, and talk to you about the mortgage, what's your call to action? Is it like you know, to have a one hour fact find meeting? Or is it a lot easier for the client to take? A call to action should be simple, you see, for people to action upon, rather than a great big decision to make. Now, all these questions make you think about the answer. And the answer, of course, is the 15-minute mortgage discovery call, as we call it. So where does the 15-minute mortgage discovery call fit? Now, it fits, of course, into your advice process. And here's a picture for you of your current advice process. Well, it could be your advice process anyway. Let's make it slightly bigger so you can see this, actually, because uh, you probably want to see this in a bit more detail. This is typically how a mortgage advisor, a modern one, would work nowadays. First of all, they'll do their lead generation. In other words, they will generate leads in whatever way they do it, referrals, buying these off the internet, or whatever it is. Then they have the 15-minute discovery call. And we'll talk about this in a second or two because it's the, it's the stepping stone, if you like. Following the discovery call, we then have an affordability and costs conversation. Following the affordability and costs conversation, we then have the fact find. Now, many advisors have one great big meeting to cover everything, and that's fine. But lots of new virtual advisors are having small, shorter meetings to do these things. Then you're going to do your sourcing, aren't you? Sourcing of the right mortgage. Then you're going to give your advice and close the sale, if you like. And then finally, you're going to have a mortgage offer meeting once the mortgage offer is completed. And then finally, finally, you're going to have a post-completion meeting. In other words, when the, when the mortgage is completed, you're going to have another meeting to wrap things up. Now, it might seem quite long-winded, but these are short meetings. These are not long-winded meetings like in the old days when you had a two-hour mortgage interview. No, these are not like that at all. So what's the, what's the objective then of the 15-minute mortgage discovery call. Well, the objective, as you can see here quite clearly, let's just put us both in there for you, see, is to gain commitment from the client to progress to a fact find or to an affordability conversation. The whole point behind the 15-minute mortgage discovery call is it gives you the opportunity to have 15 minutes of complementary time where you set the scene and get things moving. 
and then of course you, you, you get to talk about your fees and things like that. So let's just talk through how the 15 minute mortgage discovery call works, the kind of things you might want to put into it. But remember the objective is this is complimentary, this is on your dollar or, or, or your pound, and the objective is to get commitment from the client to progress to the next stage, which might be a fact find or affordability meeting. So what are the steps involved then? Again, I'll, I'll put the screen up bigger for you so you can see all of this then. Here are the steps, suggested steps for a 15 minute mortgage discovery meeting. The first thing you're going to do is you're gonna break the ice. You're gonna chat about anything you want to. I, I got the three Fs there, family, fun, future. You can do what you like. This is about building rapport, having a bit of a chat, isn't it? Breaking the ice, that's important to do that. But remember this is only 15 minutes, so you can't do too much of that. The next thing is your value proposition. You're going to propose exactly what you're all about. This is your sound bite, your elevator pitch, call it what you like, your story. This is your value proposition. This confirms how you operate in the marketplace. You'll then want to sow the seed for referrals later, and we talk about that in other videos. Then you'll want to get into your FCA authorization and status because you have to, and it's the right thing to do because it, it's, it's very beneficial to the client to know that the watchdog, you're fully authorized um, with the FCA, the, the, the public watchdog that looks after the mortgage sector, and you're fully authorized and trained to give mortgage advice. You should do that, and that's something to get over at that point. Then you want to talk about the customer's overall goals and aims. So chat to them. What, what, why is it they want to talk to you? What's, what's their objective here? What's their goal? What are they trying to achieve? Is it development finance? Is it, is it you know, to buy a new home for their family? Is it about upgrading their property? What is their goal? And they will talk to you about that. And you can get a good insight into what they're up to by asking questions around that. Then you want to qualify the customer. Now, with the phrase qualifying, what we mean there is you want to make sure the customer is a good fit for your business model. You shouldn't deal with every single person that you talk to. People that start off tend to do that because they're looking for business. But you need to qualify the customer. How motivated are they? Do they have the ability to purchase? Do they have the need to take a mortgage? And are they having the relevant time scale, MANT we call it. That's called qualifying the customer. Then comes the big one, and this is your trust, gauging their personality. Um, if, you, if you've qualified them and you think, think they're a good fit, then you want to start building trust, and then you want to disclose your fee. You want to lay out the value of what you do, how do you operate, what's the value that you provide clients, and then you want to illustrate your fee. That's when you get the discussion. Again, another video on that one for you. You might do that one next week, week after, on how you can sell your fee. But if you're charging a fee, of course, you should tell them now. You know what their goals and objectives are, so you will have a very good idea of what kind of fee you're going to charge. Because many brokers, um, they leave the fee flexible, don't they? According to the amount of work involved. Now, they've told you what their goals are, and you've qualified them. You know roughly how much work is going to be involved now. If you don't, you should. And then the final thing, of course, once fee disclosure, is you want to gain commitment, agreement to proceed because you qualified them, you want them as a client, you want to get that commitment to proceed. And of course, once you start proceeding, let's just put myself back over here for you, once you proceed at this point, then the time clock starts. Your fee has been agreed, of course, you've laid that out to the client. They've said, yes, I'll be happy to pay that. The value you're going to give, that's brilliant. Let's go ahead with this, let's do this now. So whatever paperwork you want to issue as a result of that is fine. But you see, after 15 minutes, You've got a really good understanding of where the client's going, what their goals are, you know what kind of client they are, you've qualified them, they've agreed your fee, everybody's happy, it's very professional, and then you move on to the next part of your sales process. So that is the 15-minute mortgage discovery call. Good enough. It does work too. It really does work. There's plenty, plenty of advantages of having that system built into, your, uh, into the way you operate. It really does work. Well, let's wrap up our live stream on that point, Sure, We might do a few more of those for you on, on the mortgage sales process, particularly how you introduce your fee as well, because that's an area that a lot of mortgage advisors are very unwary wary about, they're very um, unconfident about doing. And I've got a few tips and techniques to share with you that you know, successful mortgage advisors use, mortgage brokers do, when you charge fees, of course. But it's all done for the mortgage discovery course.